how to communicate with the Fronius inverter. This is the question we are asking today in our today's webinar, the Fronius data communication. I welcome you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Michael Raunig, and together with my colleague Sandro Köhl, we will guide you through this webinar today. If you have any questions during or after the webinar, please feel free to use our live chat function and ask us these questions, and we will then answer your questions during or after the webinar. Sandro and me, we are from the team Trainings and Education here at Fronius International from the a business unit solar energy and we are here for the trainings and webinars for you so if you have any questions please feel free to use our chat function so first of all let's have a look what's on the agenda today first of all we will talk about the data communication on phone your snap inverter devices so first of all the data manager 2.0 will be a topic today as well as its integrated interfaces we will talk about the Fronius SolarNet and the connection via the Wi-Fi or Ethernet communication. The Modbus communication is the second big topic of today. And we will have two different variants, the Modbus RTU, and we will talk also about the TCP IP. Third up is then the commissioning of the inverter itself. So we will show you how to commission the inverter, how to set up the Wi-Fi access point and how to do the commissioning overall. The Fronio smart meter is our bidirectional meter, and we will talk about how to use the smart meter to get the most out of your PV system and how to visualize your PV system. Monitoring, of course, is a very important part, especially when it comes to third party devices or existing devices. And therefore, we will show you today how to retrofit a Fronius energy monitoring into an existing or third party system. Last but not least, we will talk about the Fronius energy management solutions, and we will show you what is possible regarding control of loads in a household, for example, and how to do it with the Fronius energy management IOs. So first of all, let's start with the data communication of the Fronius Snap Inverter Series. The Fronius Snap Inverter Series is depending on the Data Manager 2.0. And this data manager card that you can see in the middle picture, this is really uh, a very important part when it comes to data communication of the inverter. With the data manager, it is possible to access our Fronius web interface, the web UI, and therefore make the commissioning and the access to the inverter itself. So every time when you want to alter your, your settings on the inverter or when you do the commissioning, you can combine with the data manager card and therefore connect to your inverter to alter these settings. Furthermore, of course, the data manager card is very important when it comes to connection to the internet. So with the data manager, it is possible to connect to a local router. So either by Wi-Fi or LAN communication, you can access Fronius Solar Web. So by bringing the inverter online to our Fronius solar web visualization, it is then possible to view the current state, for example, of your PV system. So here you see it in the picture, the little bubble chart, you see what is currently going on in your system. Furthermore, of course, you can do some analysis and energy balance, and you can show, for example, reports and state codes. It is therefore then possible to, for example, make automated reports per week and of course, to get uh, failure messages directly to your smartphone, for example, via SMS or for example, via email. Furthermore, of course, the visualization can take place either on your laptop, on your smart device, like a smartphone, or of course, also on a tablet. So here you can use solar web on these uh, end devices and make your visualization at the best possible way. The Fronius Data Manager, as I told, is a plug-in card. So it is integrated in the Fronius Inverter itself. It is more or less a data logger card, a web server, and a Wi-Fi card. Therefore, it is possible to monitor up to 100 inverters in one system. So if you have a very big commercial system with multiple inverters, it is no problem to monitor all of these inverters at once with this Data Manager card. Visualization, of course, is a very important point here in Fronio Solar Web, for example. 
Also for the end customer, very interesting. We have the solar web app. You can access the app and make your monitoring easy on your smart device. And of course, for bigger public viewing, you can use also on your solar TV, for example, to show off the data of your TV system. Furthermore, the data manager, of course, has an open interface. So therefore, we will talk today about the Modbus TCP. The SunSpec Alliance is really important here, and also about the Modbus RTU. Fronio Solar API is available. This is a JSON protocol. And with this Fronio Solar API, it is possible to send data from the inverter to third party devices. So for example, if you want to charge your car, you can use this Fronio Solar API to send data from the PV system to the electric car charging station. So therefore, as you see, you can use these open interfaces to interact with other third, per, third party devices. Furthermore, we have the connection to the Fronio smart meter, of course, and our energy management output. So on the data manager plug, uh, we will see later on the energy management output that you can use to control your loads in the household. As I told before, we are talking about the SunSpec Alliance. And of course, this SunSpec Alliance is a very important fact when it comes to open communication with other devices. So the SunSpec Alliance was founded originally in the United States in 2009, and it defines the communication of PV system components. So this is not only about inverter communication, but you can add some system components within your PV system. And this makes it very easy to communicate with other open interfaces and other third party devices. And therefore the worldwide member list is very long. So we are part of this worldwide member list in company with other, other manufacturers. Furthermore, to get a member of the SunSpec Alliance, there is a certification required. So you only get a member if you pass the certification and the advanced test procedure. And the PV system components from different manufacturers can be monitored uh, very comfortable in one network. So here, therefore, you can just monitor your system and make sure that you always have the best visualization possible. Furthermore, of course, the SunSpec Alliance uses Modbus RTU or Modbus TCP protocol. So this is both possible. Furthermore, let's have a look about the overview of the integrated interfaces of the Snap Inverter series. So in the picture, you can see uh, Fronius Primo Snap Inverter from the downside. So in this case, the .com cover is removed. And therefore, you can see your interfaces that are usable within the inverter. First of all, number one and two, these are two plugs and they are used for the solar net in and out. So for our Fronius solar net, inverter to inverter communication, we are always using an in contact and an out contact. So with this in and out contact, you can implement the inverter to inverter communication. So for example, you start with the first inverter and then go to the second inverter and to the third and so on to implement all your devices within one system. The third button is the USB interface. There you can easily access a USB port. Uh, therefore, you can, for example, download your software update or your firmware update on a USB stick and make software update via the USB interface. So in this case, when you, for example, don't have a Wi-Fi connection at the state of installation, at the place of installation, you can just download your uh, software update on the USB stick and make your USB update. Number four is the potential free relays. And in this case, this relay gives a 230 volt contact. And this contact can be activated when the, when the inverter is producing energy. So therefore, this can be used as a very rudimental um, energy management. But of course, uh, it is always better to use now our digital IOs. This is number six, where you can really have a dynamic load balancing. So in this case, you can take into advance uh, by using a Fronio smart meter and therefore accessing your data of consumption and feed-in power. And with this data in mind, it is possible then to do a dynamic load management. So for example, if you have a pool pump installed or air conditioning system installed, you can always switch them on and off depending what's the state on the PV system itself. 
Number five and number seven is then our communication to the, to the internet, to the network. So in this case, number five is the Wi-Fi antenna and number seven is then the LAN port to communicate with a router. In the number eight, you can see the status LEDs and these are four LEDs. They are showing you the actual status of the inverter itself. So there you see when all four LEDs are green, you have a correct working inverter. Number nine, the last button is then the signal input. And this signal input can be used for inputting a signal into the inverter. So for example, it is possible to do an over voltage protection. And with this over voltage protection, you are taking these signals to the signal input. And therefore the inverter can recognize, for example, when the over voltage protection is triggered out. So in this case, the inverter gets a signal when the over voltage protection is triggered and then can send you a status SMS or email that you get a recommendation, uh, go to the inverter, have a look what's wrong. The over voltage protection has triggered, for example. So this can be used with the signal input. Regarding the Fronio SolarNet, uh, we have this inverter to inverter communication. So in this case, we have a specific protocol for the communication between the individual Fronius inverters. So in this case, we are using here a ring topology. So each device has got an in and out socket. And for communication between the inverters, you are using just LAN cables. So we recommend here cut five cables or higher. And therefore you just make your connection via the, the LAN connection. So in this case with the cabling. So on one hand side, at the first inverter, you are doing the termination plug. So this is very important. At the beginning and at the end, you always need to do the termination. So this can be done with a termination plug with an open cable, for example, like shown in the picture below. And then from the first inverter with the termination plug, you go from the output always to the input, and then again from the output to the input to the next inverter. So this is very important. Always use output input, and then again output input at the next inverter. And then you make your line from the first inverter to the last. And at the last inverter, it is again necessarily to do the termination plug again. So at the last inverter, set your termination and your communication is set up correctly. Furthermore, it is possible of addressing a connection of up to 100 inverters. So you can set up a system with 100 inverters by only using one single uh, data logger card, uh, data manager card. So in this case, you can connect up to multiple inverters with one single data manager card and therefore make your communication. So you have then several possibilities of bringing the inverter online to your local router. So first, very easy communication is of course via Wi-Fi. So you're using the Wi-Fi antenna of the data manager card and bringing your inverter online via Wi-Fi. So during the commissioning process, you can uh, bring the inverter online to your router to the internet and make your communication via Wi-Fi. Second communication possibility is when you have no Wi-Fi signal available, for example, or if there is a bad signal, you can always do the communication via cable. So in this case, for example, as you see at the first inverter, we have a data manager 2.0 built in the device and then go from the data manager to your local router via a LAN connection, for example. And then furthermore, to communicate with the other two inverters, it is possible to do the communication via the Fronio SolarNet. So in this case, you do your termination plug at the first inverter, further go to the second inverter. For example, this is a light version. You can order the light version. This is just an inverter without the data manager card. So you can save costs here and also connect it to your existing PV system. And the third possibility then for the third inverter, you can always use a data manager deactivated. So if you have one built in, you can just deactivate it and therefore have your communication set up. So as you see, you have these two possibilities of communication and they are very easy, for example, to set up. Next up is then the Modbus communication. And for Modbus communication, we have two examples. So first of all, we have the Modbus RTU example. And in this case, you see it is possible, for example, to connect a third party monitoring system. 
So for example, big example is here, Metro Control, for example, that can be set up with a third party device. And whatever comes to your mind regarding the needs of the system, you can implement such a monitoring system, or of course, a third party web portal is possible. So in this case, for example, you have two inverters with uh, two data manager cards, and then you are doing your Modbus RTU communication to this third party device. Uh, this third party device, for example, is then the master device and has its own third party web portal or third party monitoring software. So in this case, you can use this third party monitoring software, for example, to visualize your system or to forward data for another reason. Very important for the installation of the Modbus RTU communication is that you have a communication cable. This should be at least a CAT5 cable. And therefore, you always need to make sure we have three different contacts here. So we have the D plus, the D minus, and the ground connection on the Formios Data Manager. And when you then go to your third party device, for example, you need to make sure that the D plus and D minus connection, that the cable is always twisted to each other. So for example, if you're using a CAT5 cable, you can make sure that the two cables of D plus and D minus are twisted to each other and then use another cable for the ground connection. Another very important step, of course, is the termination of the cable. So in this picture, you see you have your termination resistance of 120 ohm. So this is then your termination that you need to do at the start and at the end of the communication line. So this makes sure that you terminate the communication line, that there are no uh, mistake signals in this communication itself. Furthermore, it's possible then to uh, unisolate the shield. This is very important. And you need to bring the shield on one side of the communication cable to ground potential. So this is important to have no uh, interfering signals on the communication line itself. And therefore you can unmantle um, the cable down to the shield of this cable and then bring the shield to a ground potential. So you can, for example, do this in the inverter or also, of course, in the electrical cabinet of the PV system, you can unmantle the shield and then bring it to earth potential. So these are the three steps that you need to take care of at the Modbus RTU communication. Second possibility is then the Modbus TCP IP communication. And in this case, of course, it is again possible to do a third party monitoring system and here you see, for example, you have two inverters installed. The two inverters are communicated to each other with the solar net, so with the Ethernet cable between the inverters. And then furthermore, you are going with the Ethernet cable with the Modbus TCP IP communication to a third party device. So in this case, you can use a standard Ethernet cable to connect to a third party device and therefore again, make a third party web portal or third party monitoring system and whatever comes to your mind. So therefore you have multiple of applications that you can use with Modbus TCP and IP. So thanks to the SunSpec Alliance, of course, this communication is possible. And therefore it is very important that we have this communication standard implemented in the inverter. Next up are some Modbus PV applications. So for example, uh, application example for Modbus RTU is of course our Fronio smart meter. And this smart meter is then of course used as a Modbus RTU application. Second application, for example, for TCP IP is then the Fronios and Victron Energy solution, for example. So we are fully connectable with Victron Energy. And therefore the TCP IP communication is used to connect the inverters with the Victron Energy solutions. The third example is then, for example, the Fronius and BYD solution. This communication always used the Modbus RTU communication. So this is then, for example, possible to build up a storage system with the BYD battery system to store your surplus energy in the PV system. Next step is then, of course, the commissioning. And during commissioning, we can make sure that the system is brought online to Fronio SolarWeb for making the visualization of the system. First of all, you have your easy startup. So with the display on the inverter itself, it is possible to open up our Wi-Fi access point. Therefore, you just go to the settings of the inverter and open up your Wi-Fi access point. 
After that, when the Wi-Fi access point is opened, you can connect to any smart device you want to. So either choose a tablet, a smartphone, or even a laptop and connect to this Wi-Fi access point to make the commissioning on the inverter. When you have connected your device to the Wi-Fi access point, you can then open up your browser. So for example, Firefox or Chrome, and then enter your IP address to your address. So in this case, this is a 192 pound 168 pound 250 pound 181. And this IP address, of course, is always the same for all Fronius devices. So in this case, you can use this IP address to open up the browser, and then you are connected to the setup wizard automatically. So your device is then connecting to the web interface and starts up the wizard to make your commissioning work. Regarding the Wi-Fi access point, uh, of course, the opening is very easy. You just go to the settings. So in the main menu of the inverter on the display, you just go to settings. And the second, um, the second part is then Wi-Fi access point. And you click on enter and then activate the Wi-Fi access point. So this is a very easy and straightforward process to open the access point to connect to the inverter. What can you now do when the Wi-Fi access point is not responding or is not available? Of course, first of all, you can wait briefly, especially when you first install the inverter and put on the AC for the first time. When you uh, switch on the inverter, it takes some time, some minutes until the Wi-Fi access point is available. So in this case, when you switch on the inverter or after restart also, just wait briefly until the access point is available. Second thing you can do is, of course, check your SolarNet ring. So if the termination plugs are there, and of course, if the communication cable is done correctly. Fourth is then a check protocol type of SolarNet. And of course, a very important point is the IP switch on the data manager. So in this case, there is an IP switch, and there is a position A and a position B with a dip switch. And therefore, it is um, necessarily to switch the IP position to the position B. So then when you um, switch it to the position B, the Wi-Fi access point is available. Next up is the Fronio Smart Meter. And of course, the Fronio Smart Meter is our bidirectional meter for visualization of energy flows within a system. So the smart meter uh, is visualizing the consumption data of a system and also the feed-in power, for example. So the smart meter is always the basis for a complete monitoring in Fonio SolarWeb. So you can count it in as a speedometer of a car. So without the smart meter, you don't see anything. So in this case, for bringing your data to Fonio SolarWeb, it is always necessary for the customer also very good to visualize your system and to get your energy flows from and to the grid in case of feed-in for example you can use the smart meter to log this data send it to the inverter and then send it to solar web where you can visualize your system as i said the Fonio smart meter is a bidirectional meter please make sure to not exchange it with the utility grid meter so as you know there are smart meters installed now with the utility grid but this is not the same meter the Fronio smart meter is always an extra meter that you need to install extra to the utility grid meter. So the Fronio smart meter is really the heart of every smart energy management solution. This is very important when it comes to visualization and energy management, of course. Okay, the smart meter is very essential and there are two types. There is a single phase and a three phase smart meter. And in this case, we have a 63 amp smart meter for single phase use and three phase use. So of course the communication in this case is done via Modbus RTU. And for example, you can use it as a single phase device for a single phase inverter, or also for a consumption path, for example, uh, in a single phase application. For energy profiling, it is then possible to use multiple smart meters. So in this case, we call it the multi-smart metering. Therefore, you always have your primary smart meter at the feed-in point. So before going into the public grid and your utility meter, you install your primary smart meter that you can see in the right top corner. Then furthermore, to visualize your loads in the household, for example, you can install multiple smart meters to visualize your consumption or production of the device. 
So in this case, for example, you can install a pool pump, an air conditioning, and a generator, and then display this generating or, or consumed power in Fronius SolarWeb. So in this case, you then see what the pool pump is consuming and what the generator, the wind turbine, for example, is producing. So regarding visualization, this is a very easy way to bring the visualization to Fronius SolarWeb. Next up is then the monitoring of existing or third party devices. So regarding energy monitoring, this is very interesting because for example, we have two application forms here for you. And first application form is an AC capital inverter uh, for retrofitting a Fronio Simo hybrid to an existing system. So in this case, for example, if you already have an existing inverter, uh, you can just add up a Simo hybrid, for example, or any hybrid inverter to really uh, implement a storage solution to this system. So this would be the case, for example, when the customer has an already existing PV system and later on wants to add a storage system to this existing PV system. In this case, this is no problem. You just install the Fronio Simo Hybrid as an AC coupled device. So this is then coupled on the AC side. And therefore you can just install your primary smart meter at the feeding point for making the visualization. This is needed in this case for the storage solutions so that the inverter knows when to store energy into the battery and when to give it away for the loads in the household. Thanks to our Fronius multi-flow technology, we have the possibility to use the energy flows from the existing inverter to store the energy in the battery. So therefore with this multi-flow technology, it is possible to use multiple energy flows. So for example, coming from the grid, and going into the grid and of course coming from the PV generator. You can then install a secondary meter. So this would be then the production meter and it will show you the production of the existing inverter uh, even, if, even if it's a third party device or an existing device. So in this case, for example, you of course have to do your Modbus communication. You have to do your 120 ohm termination. In this case, for example, at the battery and at the secondary meter to make sure that there is a good contact between the communication cable. Furthermore, there's a possibility to just add up some PV generator to the new hybrid inverter. So for example, if there is still space on the roof available, you can also add up some PV modules. If you want to make the system bigger, make it more powerful, you can also add up more PV generator on the roof to install it on the hybrid inverter. Of course, in this case, the hybrid inverter will take the energy from the existing inverter as well as from the new PV generator that is DC coupled to the inverter. Second application form is then to implement the Fronius monitoring to an existing uh, system. So in this case, for example, when the customer wants to install uh, good solutions like the Fronius own pilot, so if he wants to use his surplus energy for generating hot water, in this case, we have it with a heating rod, in a hot water boiler and the customer wishes to use such a system for making an improved own consumption rate in his system, you can just add up the Fronius monitoring to the existing system. So nevertheless, if you have an old Fronius inverter or an, a third party device, you can implement the Fronius monitoring to an existing already existing device. So in this case, the retrofitting is done via the data manager box 2.0 that you can see on the top left of the picture. And this data manager box is then used, of course, for the visualization and for the online communication to Fronius SolarWeb. So in this case, all you need to do is install a Fronius smart meter at the feeding point again, do your 120 ohm termination on the Fronius data manager box and on the Fronius own pilot, for example, and then you are free to use the Fronius our own pilot system via the Fronius energy monitoring system. So this would be a very easy solution for just implementing a Fronius monitoring system into an existing system. The data manager box, uh, you can see it on the picture on the right. Uh, this is more or less really a data manager as a box variant. And therefore, of course, you have the same uh, communication capability like you would have with an whole inverter. So therefore the data manager box can be used for setting up the monitoring system and of course making the communication also to other inverters.
As we had it in the example before, you can just retrofit your Phonos monitor with this system. All you need basically is an external power supply. So there's a little truffle that you can use for power supplying the data manager box. And then of course, again, you have your same interfaces like the data manager plug and of course your Wi-Fi antenna and the solar net communication that you can use for implementing the Phonios energy monitoring. Last point for today is the energy management solutions. So I will give you a quite overview about the energy management solutions that are possible with our inverter. First of all, we have the energy management outputs and these energy management outputs, they are integrated as standard on the data manager 2.0. So this comes standard with your data manager card. And in this case, we now have four digital outputs that we can use for making an energy controlling. So in this case, we have a free software update for activation uh, before December 2018. So devices that were uh, delivered before December 2018, they only had one digital output for controlling. And in this case, if you have an older device, just feel free to make a free software update to engage all your four digital outputs. And with those four digital outputs, it is possible then, for example, to control an electric vehicle charging, uh, for example, bigger loads like the hot water preparation or a heat pan, for example. It is always possible, for example, to control a pool pump and, for example, also an air conditioning system. So all the loads that you want to control within your household, they can be controlled via the energy management outputs. The energy management outputs can be found on the data manager plug. So the data manager plug is the orange plug that you see on the data manager card. And here you have these four digital in and outputs. So in this case, zero, one, two, and three. So these contacts can be used. These are just 12 volt signals and the data manager has a power of three watts. So for example, if you choose to switch a 12 volt relay, for example, to put on and off the loads, you just can connect the 12 volt signal from the inverter directly to your 12 volt relay and therefore switch on and off the loads that you want to control. Furthermore, for the data manager interface, for the digital outputs, you need, of course, your Phonio smart meter because then it is possible to do a dynamic control of these loads. With the Phonio smart meter, it's then possible, for example, to just put on a load when there is PV surplus energy in the system. And of course, we need the Phonio smart meter to know when there is PV surplus energy or when there is usage from the grid. A simple application is shown here in this graphic. So here we are using the 12 volt uh, signal from the from data manager, from our digital output uh, to just control a 12 volt relay. And this 12 volt relay is switching just a load uh, of, uh, for example, a socket. So the 12 watt relay is switching on and on off the socket, in this case, a single phase socket, and there you can charge your electric car. So in this case, we are controlling the charging of the electric car. It's a very easy and efficient installation. All you need to do basically is install your socket to the customer's garage. And then you, for, for example, you just install a relay, 12 volt relay, and therefore you can switch on and off his load. So in this case, the car to enable uh, PV surplus charging. Of course, this is possible for a single phase or three phase devices, uh, depending on which relay you are using and depending on which uh, load you are, you are using. So for setting of the digital IOs for the load management, uh, there is of course the possibility to enter the Phonius web interface of the inverter. And within the settings of the Phonius web interface, you can access the load management. And first of all, of course, it is important to activate the load management IOs. So in this case, you have then four IOs that you can control. And for example, the first IO is now our electric vehicle charging, and therefore you can power up by power surplus. This is the case when you have a feed-in limit. So via this power surplus, it is make sure that you have a threshold, and therefore you can set a threshold uh, for on signal and a threshold for off signal. The second possibility would be the power production. So this would be the case when you just know, okay, your, your inverter is producing right now, and therefore 
uh, activates the 12 volt signal for the load. Second on is then the threshold. So there for the power surplus in, in case of feed-in limits, you can set a threshold on and off. So you're always free to choose it between a feed-in and a consumption. So for example, like we had it with the electric vehicle charging or with a pool pump, for example, we have a feed-in of one kilowatt. So when there is one kilowatt of PV surplus energy in the system, the load will switch on and will operate. The load will switch off again when there is a consumption of 500 watts. So as you see, when there is, for example, uh, more loads in the system or when there is less PV energy available, uh, then the load is switched off again when there is a consumption in the system. Furthermore, of course, you can choose the wish duration. And therefore, you can, for example, set the minimum duration per on signal, for example, for one minute. Good example here is, for example, for the electric vehicle charging. Electric cars don't like it when you switch on and off um, the charging station immediately. Then they think the charging station is faulty. And therefore you can, for example, set the minimum duration per on signal to 15 minutes, for example. Second is then the minimum term. And there we have the maximum duration per day. And this would be a good example, for example, a pool pump. Uh, so if you wish to have your pool pump operated for 60 minutes a day, but not longer, you can set the maximum duration per day to 60 minutes. The last point is also very important is the desired duration. And this is then of course uh, needed to make sure that your load is operated. Nevertheless, if there is PV surplus energy during the day or not. So for example, let's assume it's a cloudy day and you don't have PV surplus energy, but you have your car controlled by the digital IOs. Therefore, your customer wants to make sure, of course, that his car is fully charged at the next morning, no matter if there was PV surplus energy or not. And therefore, you can choose your desired duration per day. So for example, 60 minutes or 240 minutes, and then you have it finished by six o'clock in the morning. So therefore, it is make sure, it's made sure that you have your car charged up at the next day and your customer is ready to leave the house with a fully charged car. So therefore you can uh, use the settings as you need it. So depending on the application you're using, you can um, put in these settings. Furthermore, there are three different energy management priorities. So depending on the application, you can freely choose how to prioritize these loads. So for example, you can set the battery system to priority number one. So when there is PV surplus energy, first of all, the battery system is charged. Second is then, for example, the load management. So when there is a pool pump installed, for example, and third priority is then the own pilot. So when there is uh, extra energy left, uh, then it is um, stored in the form of heat, in the form of hot water with the Fonios Ampalat, for example. Same goes for, of course, the digital IOs. So for the equal limits, um, there is then an activation after the sequence. So the lowest, um, the lowest energy will go first and the highest energy, the highest energy demand will go second and third and so on. Last but not least, I want to show you our new hybrid inverter, the Fonius Gen24 Plus. And with this new hybrid inverter, of course, our communication signal uh, is on again. So with the Fonius Gen24 Plus, we will also have these communication features I showed you today. And therefore, it is also, of course, possible to bring the hybrid inverter online to Fonius SolarWeb to make your visualization and have the compatibilities with all the third party devices. So the Gen24 Plus will bring you the same um, communication standards that you are used to from the Snap Inverter series. Furthermore, there will be a new feature. There will be the Fonio Solar Start app. And with this app, it is possible to connect with the inverter via your smartphone app. And this enables a very smooth and very easy commissioning process. So with this Solar Start app, you have a very easy and straightforward commissioning process. And this should just ensure to save your time and to make a very smooth and easy access to the inverter at the customer's place so that you don't miss any time at the customer, but have a very smart and very quick installation and commissioning process. Okay, 
Further information you can find uh, regarding commissioning, of course, on our Fronius homepage, fronius.com. Under the download section, you can find further instruction manuals and installation instructions, for example. So if you want to know uh, more information about the uh, installation and commissioning, you can find it under the download section. So please just put in your wished searching feature, put it into the download section and search for the topic that is interesting most for you. Furthermore, I want to invite you to our trainings and webinars. So on the Fronius homepage, you can find under Solar Energy and Info Center, you can find our events and there you always find our newest webinars. And of course, you can also find the existing webinars on our YouTube channel, Fronius YouTube channel. There you find how-to videos and very useful webinar, um, webinar topics that you can have a look on. Okay, during our webinar, of course, we gained a lot of questions from you. And therefore, I want my colleague Sandro to read out some of these questions. Yes, thank you very much, Michael, for this very clear and good presentation. Now I think we will answer a few questions from you guys live now. Maybe, Michael, you can join anything. So one question was actually, how can you deactivate the data manager in series of inverter in loop? That means if you have connected multiple Fronius inverters in a loop, how can you deactivate the data manager? Uh, that's of course the solar net ring. And it's very easy because there is a master slave switch uh, on each data manager. That means if you have got multiple data manager within this loop, you just define one as a master and set the other ones via this dip switch on the slave mode. That was one question which came up. Another question was uh, also regarding the solar net ring. So what is the maximum distance uh, of the solar net ring from first to the last inverter? Actually, the maximum distance is 1000 meters. That means from the beginning to the end and not between two inverters uh, to make this clear. And Michael, also maybe one question for you, the last one. So uh, you mentioned on the data manager, the, also the digital inputs. So we have got uh, on the orange bar also digital inputs. Do we have possibly an application example for that? Or is that possible? Can you tell us something on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So the digital inputs you can always use, for example, to make a dynamic uh, management of the of the inverter itself. So, for example, you can set your limits to 70 percent to 50 percent, for example, and always when there is an input activated, the inverter um, drives down the feed-in energy to the grid. So this makes sure to have a dynamic feed-in limitation, for example, and therefore you can use these digital inputs that are available on the data manager. Okay, thanks on that, Michael. The rest seemed to be super clear, your presentation. Yes, we will stay a few minutes online afterwards. So if there are any open questions now, please address them to us. Uh, we will stay a few minutes online and I will hand over to you again, Michael, to give you the closing words of the presentation. Yeah, thank you, Sandro, for the questions and answering part. And I thank you guys, of course, for tuning in today. Thank you for your attention. And of course, I hope that we see each other again at one of our trainings or, of course, here in one of our webinars. So see you the next time here at Fronius. Take care and goodbye.